All right. We're talking, we're continuing in the Lakuti Sichas of the Rebbe, Lubavitcher Rebbe. Chilak Zion. Parshas Bahar. We're talking about. Oh, oh. We're talking about Yovel, the 50th year. Yovel, the 50th year and the 7th year. In Judaism, when all the Jews were on in Eretz Israel in the first temple, there used to be a thing which is called Yovel, the Jubilee year. <clears throat> the how do you know what Jubilee year? The 50th year. Which 50th year? The 50th year from the beginning of counting the Shemitahs. What's Shemitah? Shemitah is a seven year period. And uh, you count six years, and the seventh year is a year of rest for the land. You're not supposed to work on the land. After you count seven of these Shemitahs, namely 49 years, then there was a 50th year, and that year all the laws of Shemitah also applied. But in addition to that, all Jewish slaves went free, all land went back to its original owners. That was the Yovel, was your freedom. So the Rebbe said that the, the, when the first temple was destroyed, they didn't uh, do this Yovel year. They just counted seven years. And as soon as the seven years was finished, seven times seven, the 49 years was finished, immediately they started another counting. They didn't make a 50th year. When the second temple came, as um, all the Jews weren't in the land of Israel anymore. There were a lot of Jews that stayed back in Bavel, etc. And so all the Jews weren't in the land of Israel. And there were Jews also that refused to go, come back. And uh, <clears throat> then there was a little bit of a problem. So it said, well, they did count the Jubilee years. They counted it as far as the counting goes, because it was better than not having a temple at all. So there was a temple, but because everybody wasn't there, so they counted the 50th year, but they didn't have all the laws of the 50th year. The, the, the Jewish slaves didn't go free and etc. And uh, they counted the, the, the only the Shemitah years. So it says, but there's a question. It says, it says <clears throat> that the only time when the Shemitah years exist is a Tosfos says the only time a Shemitah years exists is when there's a proper Yovel. No Yovel, no Shemitah. So the Gemara Yerushalmi answer is well, there was Shemitah, but it wasn't officially a Torah commandment. It was only a rabbinical commandment. Now the rabbinical commandments haven't got as much force as the Torah commandments do. Not because, in fact, there are any less. Because the Torah commanded the rabbis to make commandments. But the Torah also put as a clause that the commandments that the rabbis made are less severe. <clears throat> in a lot of ways. One way is, if you have a doubt. If you have a doubt that you did a rabbinical commandment or not. For instance, if you have a doubt, if you made a blessing before eating an apple. Or a blessing after eating an apple. So you have a doubt, so you don't have to make it. You don't have to make the blessing, a doubt, because it's only rabbinical to make blessings before and after eating, except for bread. If you ate bread, it's a commandment from the Torah, you must make a blessing. So if you have a doubt, if you made the blessing after eating bread, then you do have to make that blessing along. It's a big, long blessing. What's human nature? What's human nature? It's rabbinical. Torah is written in stone. It's rabbinical. Okay. So therefore, there's a lot of laws that because they're rabbinical, is they made them more severe than the Torah laws, so that you won't forget about it. That is, you won't forget, you won't treat it lightly. So they they put certain severities. In human nature, that's why some people treat them a little bit as though they're not as important as... Of course. Listen, that was the big... Any group that tried to destroy Judaism the first thing they would strike at was the oral Torah. Destroying the oral, oral Torah, that's destroying Judaism. Because if you destroy the, God forbid, the oral Torah, then there's no laws. You don't know when Shabbat is. You don't know what a Jew is. 
You don't know what, what tefillin is. You don't know what anything is. You don't know what the Ten Commandments are. What does it mean, don't kill? Maybe it means don't kill bacteria. <clears throat> Maybe don't steal means don't steal second base. I mean, any, anything goes. Everybody can just make up whatever they want to. Or like the, 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 the Catholics, the Protestants, what do they do? They said all the commandments are spiritual. It's all spiritual. Shabbos, spiritual. Don't eat, trade, not kosher food, spiritual. Don't eat blood, spiritual. Everything is spiritual. And all you have to do is believe in one person. That's the only real commandment there is now. Those believe in one person. So everything's spent. Then there came like the Beitusim, and the, there was the Tzedukim, and there was the Karaim, and there was the, the Shomranim, and there was, of course, the, 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 uh, the Reform and Conservative movements, and all of this. It was basically in the same spirit as Christianity was, striking at the Oral Torah, taking away these... Rabbinical laws. Eh, I'm also a rabbi. Who is this rabbi? Yochanan, rabbi. I mean, these people could raise the dead. Eh. Who says? Where does it say that? It says in the, in the oral Torah. No, they made that up too. Made up the whole thing. <laughs> okay. So um, here we go. So now we have the, 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 the rabbinical commandments. But nevertheless, part, a clause in rabbinical commandments is that they are not as severe as Torah commandments. So according to one opinion, they're Yerushalmi at least, nowadays, or at least in the time of the Second Temple. In the Second Temple, when there was no temple, there was, when, when, when the, all the Jews weren't living in Israel, so the commandment of doing the Shemitah year was only rabbinical. And the Talmud Bavli said it was also from the Torah. Same thing. The, 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 the conditions, the standards aren't so high. The Bavli. Let's see. So it says, what's the big difference? What's going on over here? What difference does it make? So the Rebbe says, okay, let's, now, now we're going to get into the whole big thing. All the commandments of the Torah have spiritual counterparts. <clears throat> God forbid you minimize or negate one of the commandments of the Torah, you're negating some sort of a spiritual connection. So let's take an example. Shemitah and Yovel. Okay, Herschel. Shemitah and Yovel. Shemitah and Yovel. The Shemitah we say is every seven years. Yovel is once every 50 years. The Yovel is much more powerful. It's a higher spiritual level of connection to the Creator, revelation of the Creator, than the Shemitah is. Shemitah is also a revelation of the Creator. That's why we don't work so much. It's like, if you want to see the Creator, you have to sort of cut down a little bit on your own ego. Yeah, that's the day of Shabbat. Ideally, what does God want Shabbat for and the, the Shemitah and all these high levels so that we could fix up this world the way God wants without letting the world affect us negatively, that we should affect the world positively. Okay. Says the Rebbe, let's go, let's there's two types of what's called bitl. There's two types of what's called, what do you want to call, harmo, harmony with God. There's what's called bitl yesh and bitl amatziut. There's, what are you calling it, har, harmonizing your ego with God and harmonizing your essence with God. Bitl hayesh and bitl amatziyas. Uh, let, let, let me give you an example of what, what, what this means. Let's say, it says you work in a job, right? You work in a job, and and the boss, big boss, there's a thousand people working, and the boss loves to play golf. You hate golf, but the go, the boss says, "Okay, Urshel, you with me?" The boss invites you to come and play golf with him. You say, oh man, this is terrible. On one hand, I hate golf. I just think it's the most ridiculous game in the world. I mean, just such a big waste of time. But the boss really loves golf. And I mean, I can't let him know I hate it. And this is my chance for a raise, maybe. I mean, the boss might recognize my talents and, you know, if there's an opening. So, so I got to put, so he goes and he talks to his wife. So his wife says, you got to go take courses in golf. When are you supposed to take this, this uh, play with golf? In another month. Take courses. So he goes and he buys, Gates takes a crash course in golf. 
and he learns how to swing and he learns how to breathe and he learns the different the, the ironers and the, the putters and the what are, <laughs> he learns the whole thing right and he gets the whole business and he watches you know movies of people and he copies it and his wife keeps telling him you know wake up early and practice let's say if you can you know get those Arnold Arnold Palmer moves or whatever it is and sure enough and he does it you know? And so he forces himself, he goes to the road with his, with his boss, and he plays golf, hates golf, hates it, hates it. But the golf boss loves it, and he learned how to do it, so he forces himself. And, of course, he has to play, he has to, in, he has to smile. How are you doing? Oh, nice. He says, oh, good, good putt there, boss. Wow, what a chip, what a drive, what a this. And he, has, he knows all the words. So, so, <laughs> So the boss says, oh, I see you're a real connoisseur of, uh, of golf. Yeah, but, you know, I didn't have a chance to play very much. I was always so busy working. And then, then. his boss says, you know, I'd like to play next week. Oh, this is awful. So he plays next week with the boss. And the boss says, hey, you know, you're not bad yourself. And he, he starts to get into it. He starts to see that golf is really a very fine game. And it's really a very challenging game. Not like what he thought. True, it's not like, uh, you know, what is it, regular, what is it, WWE wrestling or something like There's no fire shooting up. It's not like roller derby, right? And, you know, he can't knock the boss down or something, but but never. (laughs) He starts really enjoying it. He starts really enjoying, you know, playing golf until finally he, like, really enjoys it. Really starts enjoying it. He gets pleasure out of playing golf. Okay, that's two levels of what we call bitul. One level is that you force yourself. You force yourself to serve God. You force yourself to do the commandments. You force yourself to enjoy it. Because you know that there's something to it. Let's say you even think there's a big reward. You're going to get a big reward after you die. There's going to be a big reward for doing the Torah and the mitzvahs and everything. And then, but then, and so you do it. And so you do it and you force yourself to do it. And it could be you even get into doing it. But you don't really enjoy it. Like you enjoy a good steak or you enjoy, you know, seeing your bank account go up another zero or something. Yeah. But then you start, let's say, you learn Hasidus and you're this, and you really start to get into doing the mitzvahs. You really, wow, you know, you really start to enjoy it. This is really God's will, and you really enjoy it. You really get pleasure. That's called bitl hamatzius. This is a higher level of bitl. It's like a person's heart or lungs or liver. When it works... You don't feel it. It's because it works just part of the... So it says the Rebbe, this, the Shemitah and the Yovel, the seventh year and the fiftieth year, this represents these two levels of bitol, if you want to call it surrender or harmony. The lower level is when you force yourself, you do everything you're supposed to do, but you force yourself to do it because you're thinking of a bigger picture that you don't 100% get, but you do it. And then afterwards, you become part of the picture. You really start to enjoy... <clears throat> doing Torah, serving God, right? like in our story, he really started to enjoy <clears throat> golf himself. So let's do it. Let's do it inside. Hey, yes, Kavar Huzbar Pam Bar We already explained once in great length. Odot Shte Dargo Chebebitol. Two levels of bitul of what do you want to call it? surrender, unification, harmony. Bitul Ayesh. One is called bitla yesh, which means surrendering, harmonizing your ego. Shezuhi b'chlalos avodah shel kabbalat ol. This in general is what's called taking on yourself the yoke. Don't ask questions. You just do it. Bitl, then that's one level. Forget about pleasure. Forget about enjoying it. You're not going to enjoy it. You just do what you're supposed to do. You just do what God says. Okay. And then there's a higher level, which is called bitla matzius. Bitla Matthias no comes from Mehavana Sikhlis Shabakal Echad Me'em Yesh Mailam Yuchad. This comes from understanding, grasping, realizing. Call it in English, realizing, making the thing real. Suddenly you realize, wow, you know, let's say in our case, golf is really good. He really understands it. He gets the oh. It's, a, it's an intellectual awareness. Uh what do you want to call it? Uh, awareness of the uh, 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 awakening, you want to call it. Awakening. Suddenly he realizes, oh, golf is good. He clicks. That's called the upper unity. The lower unity is that he forces himself to do it. 
He believes that he's good. Of course, substitute golf, substitute serving God. But there's something good about this higher unity is Lagabi Akamus Behispashtus Shalabitl. How much surrender there is. Asher Makifet Adam Kulo. This higher level of unity with God surrounds the person totally. He enjoys it. Asher Eno Mashpia. I'm sorry. Ah, not like <coughs> what we said, this level of bitl of just your ego. This does not apply to all of the powers of man and not all of the time. Um, okay, if you, if let's substitute bitl from the gulf, we'll substitute life. So if a person surrenders himself to God because God is the source of all life and God is creating all life, but he doesn't feel it, so this is called negating your ego, surrendering your ego, harmonizing your ego to God. But it doesn't apply to all the time and all and everything that you do. It's a thing you have to force yourself to do. So things, for instance, you do automatically that don't require an ego, eating, sleeping, making money, etc. You just do it. Right? You don't feel God when you're doing these things. Then there's what's called, that's bitl yesh. Then there's a higher level, which is called bitl b'metziut, this is a level where you feel God in everything that you do all the time. Like it says, In all of your ways you know it. A mile of bitl ayesh is the gabi echut the outsma bitl. The bitl ayesh is the mile of bitl ayesh is the quality and the power of the bitl. Kivan te darga bitl b'metzios a bitl novea mehavana since the level of Surrendering yourself totally. This comes from awareness. Hari av a bitl atzmo kashur le mitziuto vahavanato shel adam. The almost a bitl ayesh, but if a person negates his ego, asher enenu kashur le mitziuto adam. This is not relevant to my existence. There's some power that causes me to relinquish all pleasure. Shari le epech mitzad mitziuto shelo. What's the Rebbe saying? For a person to go against himself, this takes a deeper power than for a person to surrender himself to God because he enjoys it. If he surrenders himself to God because he enjoys it, so that's in a way nature. That's in a way nature. A person that feels the oneness of Hashem is automatically gets pleasure from serving Hashem. But a person that doesn't feel the oneness of Hashem, and he has to serve God from willpower, so he has to force himself. Where does this power of forcing yourself to go against your will come from? This comes from a higher thing. True, you're not flowing as much. You're not, but on the other hand, you're really forcing yourself. So it's almost, let's take the example with the boss, right? The boss says, listen, Joe, you know, I know that in the beginning you didn't like golf. I know in the beginning you were forcing yourself, and now you really enjoy golf. Well, I really appreciate that, that you enjoy golf like I enjoy golf. But I appreciate it even more that you forced yourself, you went against your will in order to play golf. That shows a higher level of devotion. But at, at, at that point, they have a conversation. He's not at that point anymore. He's, he's now at the point where he actually does enjoy it. I appreciate that when you started... Right, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. But, but you don't want to stay at that point. Don't want to stay at that point. And also, that point sounds sort of similar to people who do mitzvahs that have... Uh, I do it because my father does it, and I get up and I just make it right for the road. Okay, here we're talking about that's doing right. it for God. Yeah. We're talking about doing it for God. If a person does the commandments, just let's say he puts on tefillin in order to improve his blood pressure, or he does it, puts on because his father did it. So it's a question if that's really co- fulfilling the commandment or not. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a question if he really fulfilled the commandment or not. Usually sometimes we say that we talk lo lishma, bo lishma. If a person does something lo lishma, not for the sake of God, not for the sake, it'll, mm-hmm. eventually he'll, he will do it, so at least he did it. Okay. That's a consideration to do. But you're right. That's not the general general way to do it. But, 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 but. 
you have to realize a person in Judaism, there's no such thing as a person reaching, how do you say, nirvana. He gets it, he's enlightened. Oh, I'm enlightened, that's it, I made it. There's no such thing in that in Judaism. In Judaism, a person always has to keep working. No matter how, <coughs> how love, what level a person is at, there's infinite closeness to God. And even if he comes infinitely close to God, and he has to bring that to other people also as much as he can. So there's no end to this, what do we call it, going against yourself, Kabbalah all. This is the mile of Shemitah when the first temple was going. Sha'az, Chavroshtein Malot El Biachad. Then both of these were joined together. Then, <clears throat> in the time of the first temple, there was Kabbalat Ol. There was this forcing yourself to do what God wants. That's Shemitah. Hayata Ba'ofen Shel Bina. But it was in a higher way. It was in a way because the Yovel was there. So people did force themselves, yes. But on the other hand, they also were aware of God. Because it was the first temple, everybody was on the land of Israel. And there was the Jubilee, the Yovel was there. So there shined this higher level down. Hayu Havana, there was understanding. <coughs> the time and a reason, beat Batlut, Mitoch, Kabbalah's all, for them to negate themselves with Kabbalah all. A little bit something like it is, people that go by the Rebbe. People that were by the Rebbe, they went by the Rebbe, right? And all of a sudden they got a shot. This is really Judaism. This man is really Judaism. He's doing Judaism because really God is commanding us. The same God that's creating us, He's commanding us right now. When you do a commandment, you're really connected to God. And really, look at this man. So people still had to force themselves to do the commandments. But still, because they were under the influence of the presence of the Rebbe, or in 770, where all this holiness was there, so both of them were together. On one hand, you did have to force yourself. We're talking about a new Jew. You brought a Jew from nowhere. Right? I have a friend that he takes busloads of people to 770 from Toronto. So he said, the only problems I have is on the way there. People say, hey, the Rebbe isn't there anymore. And what are we doing? So the way, but the way back, says nobody has any problems whatsoever. Everybody feels something special is happening over there. And it's a different feeling when you do Torah and mitzvahs when you're there, you really feel that it's not something that's part of normal life, that somehow or other is connected to the Creator, Creator, very real. So that's something like it was in the first temple. The Jewish people did force themselves to do Torah and the commandments. That's the idea of Shemitah. But on the other hand, there was this feeling of total surrender to God, which that's the idea of Yovel. They were both there together. Therefore, God the Bittal of Anatova Mitsiotashal Adam, Hekif Adam Bakom Mitsiota. Therefore, it would fill the person's whole being all the time. That was the idea in the first temple. What happened when, when the people went to the Holy Temple? What happened when they went to the Holy Temple? They went to the Holy Temple and they felt that God is everywhere. When they went home, they were happy. They were happy to serve God. They were happy to be alive. They were happy to do Torah, but happy to do commandments. And they were happy to do this. Unfortunately, because of this happiness a little bit went to their heads and they were also happy to do not good things also. But we can't understand it until we uh, get to that place. I doubt you. It says that the, the, the Yetzir Horah, the, the lust, the lust for idolatry was so great in, during the first temple that if a person just even considered it for a fraction of a second, he was just in. That's it. He couldn't stop himself. Very difficult to understand, especially in the northern ten tribes. So they worship golden calves and they worship all sorts of crazy things. Okay, but that's not the point here. The point is <clears throat> the feeling of godliness that they had in the first temple affected even the Shemitah, even the seven year period, which is the time of forcing yourself to serve God. Lefizah, according to this, you know we'll understand the three levels of the Shemitah. Once was Kefi Shoyatar Bezaman Shayovel Noeg. How it was in the first temple when there was the level of the Yovel. Kefi Shoyatar Mi Shabatlo Ayovlos. But there still was Yovel and what to make the Shemitah. That's like in the second temple. 
And how it is after the second temple was destroyed, like nowadays, that there's no holiness at all to the Yovel. Okay, Herschel. Aleph. Bizaman by Sarishan in the time of the first base of Migdash, when there shined this level of the upper name of God, the Hey, Eloah, of God, this level of Bina, understanding God. That's the idea of the Yovel, 50th year. Bina is connected to the number 50. 50 gates of understanding. That's what it says, and there's a book called Sefer Yetzira. Hayata Ashana Amitit Belokut Hasaga. Then there was true grasping understanding of godliness. That was the level of Yovel in the first temple, Ajagam Kabbalah to all, to the level of, and that even the accept, accepting of the yoke, that people had to force themselves, which that's the level of the Shemitah. <coughs> it was in a totally different way than it was afterwards. People had to force themselves to do the Torah and the commandments, yes, but they understood godliness. They had a grasping of what God is. There was no such thing as a non-religious Jew. It didn't exist. Every Jew was aware of God. Every Jew felt God to different varying levels. And true, they also they also felt themselves, and they had to force themselves to do Torah of them. It was also to varying levels, but it was much easier because they felt godliness. Like I said, like being religious in 770 by the Rebbe. Then the second level was in the Ban Beis in the time of the second temple. Kavar Hasru Adarga Hasru Hasru Adarga Hey Eloah. There was not the upper Hey of God's name. God's name is four letters. The upper Hey of God's name represents understanding. Ah, Adayin Hoyata Asaga. But there was a certain level of understanding that was connected to accepting the yoke. People were willing. They knew, okay, I don't understand God, and I can't understand God, but that will not stop me from doing the commandments. I will force myself to do the commandments even though I don't understand. That's called Kabbalat Ol, accepting the yoke. This is like Chesed Chachma Bin Adat, as it is in the lower levels of God's revelation. Hod. Even though you do not understand <clears throat> the essence of what God is, but at least he understands that he should surrender himself to God. That's called hod. Therefore, they did count the jubilee years in order to make the Shemitahs holy. They didn't know what the jubilee year was. They didn't know what this level of understanding God is, the 50th level. They didn't understand, but they know that there is such a thing, and they know that they didn't have it. So therefore they said, okay, we'll serve God even though we don't have the understanding of God. We don't have the feeling, but we know it's the right thing to do. Kiba calls out, Therefore they counted the Jubilee year, but they didn't make it holy. It wasn't anything special. That was what's called Kabbalah all, accepting the yoke of God. But after the second temple was destroyed, now not only do we not understand God, we don't under- even understand that it was possible to understand God. Nowadays that we don't understand God, right, after the second temple was destroyed, so you get people like Spinoza and these people, what do they say? God is something you can't understand, that you never will understand, and it doesn't have anything to do with the world. It's just this sort of ethereal force that's above bad and good and above everything like that. It's, there's no possibility to understand God. That was his essence thing, right? Yeah. Do we still count the... No, 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 no. We don't count it. One, seven years, another seven years, another seven years, another seven years. There's no such thing. Therefore, I mean, uh, that's what you believe. Therefore, now the Shemitah is not connected to the Yovel at all. If you want to serve God, it's only through pure accepting the yoke of godliness, doing what God says. Because he says it, not understanding anything. What about Hasidus? What does Hasidus do? It puts back understanding. We'll talk about that more, God willing, tomorrow. Thank you very much. God bless you.